Live from the TV30 studio, here is Jim Schneider. Well, good evening and welcome to a brand new season of In Focus. We're glad that you've joined us uh, here on WVCY Channel 30 as uh, we begin our new season of In Focus and now after Labor Day. And uh, so glad you could watch us. We'll introduce our guest momentarily. First of all, a personal word of thanks to many who who called and participated and prayed during our Days of Praise share on last week, Thursday and Friday. Uh, this was our second best ever in the history of VCY uh, Ministries and uh, just over $710,000 pledged over the course of the two days. Uh, a very significant amount uh, for the limited number of hours that we spend discussing need. But uh, friends, though the, the share -a is over, the need is not. So we just want to encourage your continued uh, giving here to support the ministry of VCY. But thank you uh, so much for your involvement and thank you for doing your part as far as uh, keeping Christian broadcasting on the air. We believe it's important for such a time as this and uh, we thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, tonight, we're going to be joined by Julianne Appling, who is with us here tonight. She is president of Wisconsin Family Council. We have uh, our monthly legislative update that we're looking forward to here on a monthly basis. And Julianne, we've got a lot on our plate, everything from the Wisconsin Supreme Court, its impact as we have a new justice on there, to a shakeup at the Wisconsin Elections Commission may be coming. Uh, we also see uh, as well the a number of bills and legislation introduced, some advancing life, others that are attacking life, so to speak. Uh, and uh, also just today, a public hearing being held on declaring Milwaukee County to be a sanctuary county on transgender issues. Uh, my, these uh, matters just never let up, do they? Well, they don't. And we know that scripture tells us that times are going to wax worse and worse. But, you know, I take great heart in, in knowing, Jim, a couple of things. Like Jesus said, occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. So we stay engaged, we stay faithful, we stay knowledgeable so that we can speak truth into all these issues. Um, we still have a, a window of freedom <clears throat> open. And so we live in this grand republic that allows us as individuals to engage in a meaningful way. And certainly we all can pray. Mm -hmm. And as we watch these things, we can do way more than wring our hands and despair. Right. Um, we get to offer hope and, and help. In you know, I way. think of the scripture that says uh, Jesus spoke and he said, In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, <laughs> I have overcome the world. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. Uh, today's Patriots Day. Uh, 22 years ago today, uh, we had the Islamic uh, terrorist attack upon the United States of America. We lost 2,977 lives uh, through the attacks that happened at the uh, New York uh, Twin Towers, uh, certainly at the Pentagon, also the uh, passengers who brought down the jet uh, in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, on its way to either the White House or the Capitol. Uh, that still remains a, a mystery at this point. Uh, this is also the first time in the history since that time that a sitting U.S. president has not attended one of the official memorial events at one of these locations, uh, and uh, that is uh, sending a message across this nation. But let me just gather your thoughts on this day and its significance. Uh, September 11, 2001, certainly we, we remember. Well, I'm glad we have Patriots Day. I'm glad that, I'm sorry for the, the incident that, you know, precipitated us having this observance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 911 did show a lot of American patriotism. That was a point in history where we all watched in horror with what was, what was happening literally before our eyes. Mm -hmm. I was doing some reading today about some aspects of it. It just brought back that whole, just that feeling of, of this can't be true. It yeah. can't be really happening. But in the midst of that, boy, did we see heroism. And did we see a patriotic spirit rise out of that as Americans stepped in to help each mm -hmm. other and, and to do the things that we know we as Americans have historically done? Um, a very sobering moment. I was, we were talking about it a little bit today uh, and with our team. What's amazing to me is we're 22 years past it, and praise God, it hasn't happened again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we aren't perfect by a long shot. And uh, horrible things have happened in the interim, but not on that scale. And so I'm very grateful for that. Um, always sobered. I'm very disappointed in a president who did not take time out of his day to go to one of the places. I know at all three places they do commemorative services, mm -hmm. as they should. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that far. If he's in Washington, D.C., it doesn't take very long to get out to the Pentagon. 
he could have at least made an appearance there if he wasn't going to go to New York or yeah, Pennsylvania. And he's been across seas and yeah. supposedly yeah. in Alaska here today to make a statement. But uh, one other thing on this before we move on to some other issues, and that is the matter of the church. We saw so many flock back to the church and saw the importance of church gathering together, intense prayer for this nation, and that lasted for weeks. <laughs> Um, but we've gotten in a point where I, I, I fear, Julaine, that we've got to the point where we've forgotten God once again as a nation. Oh, yeah. I, I think we had a little bit of a blip there mm -hmm. where people um, were so they were bereft of hope. They were beside themselves with what had happened. Yeah. And their natural it's an interesting thing because the natural inclination of people was to go to where they thought they could find answers and solace in the midst of that. So they went to church. But then as we got further and further removed from it, real life settled in. Um, we got back to a kind of a normal pattern. And then um, and people just fell into those old habits. You know, I, was, I spoke in a church yesterday, Jim, where I used the phrase Christianity has been kicked to the curb in this country. And, and that's kind of what's happened. And as, you, as that happens, then it's easier for people, even in the midst of a national calamity like that, or COVID, to say, oh yeah, I kind of remember church, I kind of remember the influence of Christianity, mm -hmm. but it's not as overt. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not out there in the public. And we're told constantly, we don't want you in the public. Mm -hmm. We don't want you speaking. And so it's an unfortunate situation. We need a revival. We need a third great awakening to, to cause people. And where does that begin? It begins with the people of God in our churches and in our families. Uh, we can't, that doesn't, that doesn't start up here. It starts down here. Right. And, and that's what we should be praying for. Um, I, I don't believe, well, I believe um, 2 Corinthians, um, 7, 1 Corinthians 7, 14 applies in principle. In Chronicles. Mm -hmm. uh, Chronicles, th thank you. Um, it applies in principle. Right. It's not a promise to us, but it's certainly a principle. And if, you know, if we as God's people will humble ourselves and turn from our wicked way and seek his face and pray, he says, I, 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 you know, I'll heal your land. And um, apparently we haven't reached the point where we've been willing to do that. Yeah. Well, Patriots Day here being today, and certainly we remember November, or September 11th, uh, 2001, uh, when this nation was attacked and how badly we need to get back to the Word of God. Uh, uh, we see that righteousness exalts the nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible says that... Uh, Certainly that uh, the nation is blessed whose God is the Lord. And friendly, uh, fr friends, we frankly need to get back to that place once again. Jelaine, another day that is coming up, and that is this Sunday, uh, because it's September 17th. It's a very special day as it takes us back to the year 1787. It's known as Constitution Day. I love that. Um, and I think it's kind of neat that they kind of are close together. They relate. You know, in 1787, uh, 55 uh, people from uh, men from the then they were the states. They were the confederated states. There were 13 of them gathered in Philadelphia starting in May, met for 20 weeks, sweltering weather. And they thought they were going to revise the Articles of Confederation, which had failed to take into account the depravity of man mm. and were an abysmal failure. And instead, what they gave us is a new form of government called a republic and a constitution that begins with these words, we the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, incredible words saying we're the government and that is our rule of law. That document is our rule of law. And um, it's not, in my opinion, it is not a living document. It is a document that we need to look at in its original meaning and interpretation from those who penned it. They didn't pin it just for that day. They penned it for 2023. Right, right. And beyond. And beyond, and, and well beyond, exactly. A republic, so, if we can keep it. If we can keep it. Right, indeed. So. The words that echo forth there. But thank, thanking the Lord for this Constitution Amen. signed in Philadelphia, and uh, certainly much to be thankful for. And we think that First Amendment alone is so rich. Um, <clears throat> talking about a number of issues here tonight, Wisconsin's Election Commission looks like a shakeup uh, perhaps taking place there. We had the uh, a Senate committee today uh, who decided that uh, we're not going to reappoint Megan Wolf uh, onto this commission. Well, we need just a little more controversy over all this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the Wisconsin Elections Commission has re <clears throat> repeatedly said the Senate doesn't have the authority to do this. And the state Senate says, watch us. So the um, 
appropriate committee has now said, all right, Megan Wolf, as far as we're concerned, you're done. Now, this is a commission that has more than once basically said, we don't care what the Supreme Court says. Remember when they were told to make sure they cleaned up their voter rolls and all right. that? Never did. Um, who knows what they're going to do? Uh, Megan Wolf never even made an appearance at the hearing where all of this was in question. I think it was a week or two ago. Never, never even came. I, I watched a portion of it online. And a couple of the people who testified said, if she really cared, why wouldn't she be here? And so we'll see how this, how this goes. Look, um, we've tried in the 20-some years that I've been doing this, we've had two or three iterations of an election commission, mm -hmm. government accountability board, whatever it was. You know, I think I've been through three or four of them. And we've never yet gotten it really right. Every time we've done this, it's been some major gaffe in how this thing is comprised, who gets to a point, who's on that, how it works. And, and now, after 2020, we've had all of this fallout, and we're facing another presidential election, and we still don't have it right in Wisconsin. So time will tell what's going to happen here through the Senate committee and, and what the makeup or shakeup is going to be there. But uh, I know there is great concern across the state on the integrity of our election system uh, from, from how we do the drop-off ballots to the ballots themselves, what laws we're going to enforce and which laws we're not going to enforce in that regard. So I know we'll be talking about that issue more to come. I'm sure. Um, the other thing that happened over the summer in a significant matter for our state is our Wisconsin Supreme Court. The ideology has now shifted in this court. Uh, whereby it was 4-3 conservative, now 4-3 liberal uh, left, uh, leftist on the Supreme Court. Uh, Janet Protasiewicz uh, uh, was um, uh, sworn into office and now has assumed that position, and uh, there's been a lot happening in a short period of time. Oh, it happened the day before she the was The day before, sworn in. right. Fired, uh, fired at that time, uh, Randy Koshnick, director of the state court system. Yeah. People like you and I knew this was coming. We knew when the April election went the way it did that because elections have consequences, there would be some really, really significant happenings, and they would happen very quickly mm -hmm. once she took that. Um, and by the way, interesting statistic I saw over <clears throat> the summer is, um, uh, oh, my word, now his name's escaping me, the only man left on our court. Um, Brian Hagedorn, Hagedorn yeah. Justice Hagedorn, 85% of the time voted with the liberals in the last four years. So I'm not really sure how that 4-3 conservative <laughs> was, was kind of messy in there with that 4-3, but it certainly was more conservative than it is now when you know for sure that you have four solid uh, liberal votes. So we're not even to the swearing in of Janet Protasiewicz and they fire Randy Koshnick. Randy Koshnick is a former uh, chief judge out in, in Jefferson County, served with distinction. He was appointed by the high court in the court, uh, well, the chief justice actually appoints it, uh, and they have to approve it as a body. Mm -hmm. And he was hired six years ago and has done a spectacular job as director of our, our state's, state courts, which is a nonpartisan job, just like our judicial positions are nonpartisan. And the day before the one of the uh, liberal justices calls and said, hey, pack, basically, pack your bags, get out of there, because be, you're going to be officially fired tomorrow. If you have any questions, call HR. Mm. What? You know, and no, no justification, no cause, no, you know, you've done a crummy job, we'll see you later. And No. And they immediately, re and, uh, there's an interim in there. Um, somebody, one, I think maybe it was Robin, no, it was Devin Lemahieu, the Senate Majority Leader, said he thinks the person they've appointed to fill that is illegally in there right. because it's still holding a judicial position, right. which you can't do. So, so it, you saw this happen. Jim, I maintained from the very beginning that if we lost that, if the conservatives lost that seat, that there was a pipeline <laughs> that was going to be filled with bills that were going to challenge who we are and what we believe as a people in Wisconsin. Well, and we're well, not too far off. No, no, because uh, what was it within 24 hours of the swearing in? One of those uh, lawsuits filed challenges our districting lines for our assembly seats, right. our and, state representative seats. Right, and then they followed it up on Monday with another one that did the same. Th there's two in there now. Mm. Uh, look, and people wonder, why are we all in a little dither about this? Because, well, first of all, because elections have consequences, and according to Wisconsin law, the majority party gets to determine the map, 
if you will, for assembly districts and senate districts. And that's very significant. Um, that, that's one of the spoils of an election, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we, we had court battles over it. We had, we, ours went to the U.S. Supreme Court. People don't, don't remember that. Got sent back to our state Supreme Court, and they had to reverse course. So um, what, what we're talking about here is whether or not the lines can be redrawn that would affect 2024, but not just 2024. The lawsuit says it should back up to the decision from 2022. And all those senators that got elected in 2022 should have to run again under the new district maps that would be drawn according to the Democrats' favor. And, and, and so what happens is right now you've got Republicans in the majority in both the Assembly and Senate. With the right, right maps mm -hmm. drawn, you could see in 2024 where you could flip at least one house and potentially both houses. Then you have Democrat in the uh, uh, governor's office, Democrat majority in both of our houses. And then all these bills that you and I have talked about and said not going anywhere because of the configuration of the legislature, suddenly they're going somewhere. Top of the agenda. Absolutely. D Jillian, what, what's also interesting in this is that, uh, you know, Robin Voss has brought up the impeachment word in this and others are saying, no, you can't do the impeachment. The voters spoke. They put her into office. But yet when it comes to the redistricting maps, the voters also spoke by putting the Republicans in office to draw those maps and, and then reelected them to office once again. So how you can discount one and not the other, it's, it's a double standard, in my opinion, uh, in that regard. But we also know that uh, the abortion statute, our 1849 law, is, is also on a, on a track to get up to the Wisconsin Well, sure Senate. it is. So this law gets filed four days after the Rovers is waived. It's returned to the states through the Dobbs decision to, mm -hmm. in 2022. And, the, and that, Jim, that lawsuit sat dormant in Dane County mm -hmm. for months. Never seen anything like that. But everybody knew that the Supreme Court election was coming in April. And so all of a sudden around that time, it starts picking up the, um, the, the, uh, Defendants had asked for uh, the, the case to be dismissed. The judge there in Dane County said, no, I'm not going to dismiss it. She, she came up with this interesting thing. She said, well, that, that 1849 law is about feticide, not abortion. Look up the definition of feticide, and it says abortion. So this is just wordplay. So, so now, in the last, after the protese witch was sworn in, Attorney General Josh Call asked the J Dane County Court to expedite this lawsuit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record publicly here as saying, I think what will happen is they will expedite it. It will go to the appellate court. And I think the appeals court, knowing it's going to land up in the Supreme Court, will ask the Supreme Court to take it directly. So they'll skip, they'll try to skip the appellate level. Now, whether the court will accept that or not, that's totally up to them. But I wouldn't be surprised. So I think that's what they're going to do. And... Um, hang on because I think that I don't mean to be the messenger of doom but if this court says that law is not enforceable what else will they do with abortion will they find a right to abortion in our state constitution will they find all the rules and regulations and restrictions that were appropriately put on abortion here in our state like our 20-week abortion ban our ultrasound requirement no telemed medicine women's right to know 24-hour notice parental rights all those things you suppose it's all, I'll be gone? Well, you're now talking about a court where you have a justice on there who came out when she was running for office, Janet Protasewicz, saying, you know, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I think this is all about a woman's right to mm -hmm. reproductive health care. Yeah. Uh, and she's made known her position, I mean, even absolutely. on the election maps, uh, saying they are rigged. You know, she uh, utilized that term as well. So uh, it's a matter that not only do we need to watch regarding, we need to pray regarding this, too, absolutely. because uh, these... Uh, the battle for life is very much before us here. Julian, something else came out here just recently, and this is a story from LifeSiteNews.com. That it's a headline says, Wisconsin Supreme Court to decide if Catholic ministry qualifies as religious under state law. I, I, I guess they're feeding people and caring for the needs of people? Well, you, you know, you're not Catholic and I'm not Catholic, but what happens to the Catholic Church when it comes to religious freedom can affect all of us. Mm -hmm. And so there's an agency in the state that oversees our unemployment law, right? And there's an exemption in our state law that if you are a religious organization configured a certain way and you know, meet certain things, you don't have to pay into the unemployment compensation program. 
Now, interestingly, the Catholic Church had an alternative that they were contributing to. But the, suddenly the state of Wisconsin said, oh, no, 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 no. We're, your activities in feeding the poor and taking care of them and offering them services are not religious. It's interesting. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what. So this lawsuit comes down to, to a matter of who gets to determine what is religious or not. Does the organization get to mm -hmm. say it? Does the fact that, so, so where does this stop, Jim? If the, if, the, if the Catholic Charities lose this case, I think that the state government starts looking at churches and says, well, you know, your, your, your addictions program, those aren't, those, that's not religious in nature. Oh, you have a soup kitchen. Oh, that's not religious in nature. Oh, you have a clothing drive. That's not religious in nature. Well, what about your youth program? That's not religious in nature. You're just doing like the why. I, I don't know where that ends. Our organization was very pleased to be a part of a friend of the court brief, an amicus brief in this, because we think that this is the state government off the rails. Mm -hmm. But this is going to a court where I have no idea how they're going to look at this. Yeah, yeah. Julianne Appling with us here tonight, legislative update, and we're taking a look at public policy related issues as well here on In Focus. And uh, friends, we're going to look at some pieces of legislation uh, here this evening as well. Uh, legislation that is uh, uh, that which is uh, in, in that advances the cause of life. Embrace them both bills. There's some uh, a series of bills we'll be talking about. We'll also give you some warnings regarding some legislation coming up here uh, tonight as well. We'd encourage you to have handy a, a notebook, a piece of paper or something just to write some of these numbers down so that you can be in contact with your legislators regarding the bills. Uh, let's talk about this first uh, pair of bills. It is Assembly Bill 357, Senate Bill 343, and it is the, uh, relates to the definition of abortion. Right. Well, these embrace them both. There's a series of four bills that were put out by, primarily by Senator Romaine Quinn, and it was an effort all about this pro-life thing. We get characterized as pro-lifers as not caring about women, and that's just a lie. So there, this is a package of bill that, bills that shows we care about women, we care about families, we care about children. Mm -hmm. And so the first one is a very, very important one to clarify what abortion is and what it isn't. In the bill, abortion is defined very clearly as the intentional killing of a child. Abortion is not when a, when a medical pr uh, professional takes care of an ectopic pregnancy or some other kind of a pregnancy that's gone awry mm -hmm. because they're not intentionally killing the child to try to save the mom. Um, so, so that's the purpose of this bill is to make sure that it's very clear because the bill that Robin Voss and his company put out, AB 175, I think it is, earlier in the session that would give rape and incest um, exceptions to the existing sta uh, statute. Mm -hmm. And uh, they tried to clarify abortion and they made it muddier. But, but this makes it very clear that if a doctor's trying to save the life of a, of a, of a woman, but the baby dies incidentally, it's just tragic, but that's not an abortion. Right. The intentional killing. So that's what this bill is about. And, and it really sets the stage for, for um, under, trying to make sure we get that pre-row law understood right. And it would affect that law, by the way. Again, friends, this is Assembly Bill 357, AB 357, and Senate Bill 343. Those are the first bills in the package. They're companion bills. They, the, the, the Assembly one says what the Senate one right. does. They go back and forth in that regard. Here's another set of bills. It is Assembly Bill 343 and Senate Bill 344. The numbers are similar, so make sure you drop, uh, uh, jot those down properly. But uh, tell us about these bills. Well, I love this bill. This bill it changes the term of dependent in Wisconsin to mean an unborn child. If, if a person who is qualified to do an ultrasound detects a, a fetal heartbeat, mm -hmm. then and let's say it's December 15th and, they detect, and the woman's pregnant and they detect a fetal heartbeat, that baby can then be counted as a dependent on that family's income tax for the year, for the current, for that year. And it also would increase the individual income tax exemption for an, a dependent from $700 to $1,000. So this is about helping families, recognizing the humanity of the, of the preborn, mm -hmm. but also helping families financially, um, you know, giving the increase, but also letting them rec um, take, off, take as a dependent that unborn baby. I love this bill. I think it's great. It's embracing them both. It is. It's embracing yeah. them both. Okay. Again, that's uh, Assembly Bill 343 and Senate Bill 344. Now, 
Here's some other numbers very similar. Assembly Bill 344 and Senate Bill 345. And uh, this is in regard to Choose Life Wisconsin. Yeah, I, well, you know, Choose Life Wisconsin is close to my heart since we headquarter in our office. Um, basically, what this, is, this does is it authorizes a, th a million dollars a year, okay, to be given to Choose Life Wisconsin. And then Choose Life Wisconsin is authorized by this bill to give that money out in grants, not to exceed $50,000, to these wonderful, life-saving, woman-helping pregnancy care centers that we have all over our state who are doing fabulous work mm -hmm. um, as the women come through and the men come through. You know, and um, so in so many ways, I think this is just a great way to to help the real the people who are really doing the on the ground services for the women that are in crisis pregnancy. So that's what it would do. Now, is that in addition to the monies from the Choose Life plates? This is completely separate from the sale of the plates. Okay. Uh, Twenty five dollars that you know people pay extra for the sale of plates, but right. no, this would be in addition to it. That a mil million dollars, yeah. Okay, and uh, just a word for those who, you know, I've had people look at a plate and say, what does that mean? What does that footprint mean on that plate? Uh, but Choose Life license plates that people can special order those. Absolutely. You go to the DOT, look under specialty license plates. There we are. Choose Life. It's got the little footprint on there. It says Choose Life. And by the way, the overturning of Roe versus Wade and putting it back in the state, the Choose Life message is never going to be out of right, style or right. out, of, out of need. We need to keep promoting that. We live in a culture of death, and we need to promote a culture of life, and that's a great way to do it. Let's get to one more set of bills in this package. It's Assembly Bill 336 and Senate Bill number 346, and uh, this is regarding adoption. It is, and it's, it's meant to give families some financial help, but it's specific. It has to be a Wisconsin family adopting a child in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping it within, it's not for foreign or, you know, uh, adoptions. It's not for out-of-state adoptions. It is, it is here. And it's got some restrictions on the money goes to a qualified um, group that is, that is already working with adoption. And then that, that group gets to give money to families in certain amounts. But it's really given, it, it's really about helping families give children a forever family. I met a family yesterday. I was telling my adoption story. And they came up after church and said, we want you to know we've adopted six. Wow. I said, well, thank you for doing that. That's wonderful. Oh, that's great. So those are all part of the Embrace Them Both bills. Now, Jillian, these are things that you inform those on your email list and, and uh, newsletters that you put out. Let's just pause for a moment. How can people get on your list so they can be informed when there are bills like these that, that do come out? Uh, call us at 888-378-7395. Email us at info at wifamilycouncil.org or that jump on our website. That is very, very fast. I'm going to slow it down. <laughs> Write it down here, friends. one 378 7395 wi is the website. And uh, get information there and Absolutely. get signed up. Well, right. We want people to, to know. Um, I'm hoping one of these days we have a real quick text message way for people to do that, mm -hmm. you know, to get in touch with us. We're trying to work on that. But, but, you know, we close our radio programs with my people. The prophet Hosea said my people um, are destroyed for, are lack, destroyed of for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And part of this is that we, in order to respond properly and to pray effectively, we need to know this is a republic. It requires the participation of our people and stewardship of our government as God's children yeah. is imperative. Mm -hmm. So knowing about these bills is really important. So these are some things on the state legislative front, and we're going to get back to the state in just a bit, but we're going to just pause here to deal with something that's happening right here in Milwaukee County. I've got before me a resolution that has uh, been placed in Milwaukee County uh, by a various number of supervisors, but uh, they have many, many whereas clauses in this uh, actual document. It's really to make Milwaukee County a transgender affirming county uh, because we can look at all their whereases, but when we get to the resolved, 
The year resolved from the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors asserts its commitment to protect transgender and non-binary individuals, believe access to health care is a fundamental right, and all people in Milwaukee County and the state of Wisconsin have access to all health care, including gender-affirming care. So they're passing this resolution saying we want to be a sanctuary uh, a county for this. Be it further resolved, said it was, if the state of Wisconsin passes a law that imposes criminal or civil punishments, fines or professional sanctions on any person or organization that seeks, provides, receives, or helps anyone to receive gender-affirming care, such as puberty blockers, hormones, or surgery. This is body mutilating surgery that they're talking about. The Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors urging, urging the Sheriff's Department to make enforcement their lowest priority. Be it further resolved, Milwaukee County may be considered a safe place, a sanctuary for transgender children and adults and their families. And then also, also that the uh, Office of Government Affairs hereby authorized requested to communicate this to you know, various legislative leaders. Julaine, um, to me, this is very, very misguided. Uh, we've seen this happen in other states, and now even where it's gotten to the point in California where they just passed in the legislature that they are going to take a parent's affirmation or lack of affirmation of uh, a child's perceived identity as whether that parent is a fit parent, whether they should have equal custody rights in a, in a, a, a divorce situation, uh, or, or even if they should lose parental rights as a result of this. But uh, your comments on this resolution. Well, first of all, let's go back in the marriage amendment. And remember when we were all dealing with the marriage amendment, when we were going to allow same-sex marriage, and we all said, if we lose this, we're going, who knows what the next thing is. And yeah. they all said, oh, no, 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 right? No, no we're... And the T word was the never part was of never it, mentioned. transgender, yeah. Who could have predicted, really, really predicted, how far this would go? A state like California is a perfect, tragic example. They are making laws out there that are, that are so bizarre and so trouncing on parental rights as to be ridiculous. I, I say this, and I, I mean it in the fullest, to the fullest degree I can. The emperor has no clothes, mm -hmm. and no one wants to admit it because this is bizarre stuff. All of this is a lie. You cannot change one's sex, your XX or your XY. Um, I had a visit today with the people who are in law enforcement about the bombing of our office. They told me something interesting. I did not know this. Maybe everybody else did. DNA can determine, the, if, you, if you examine DNA, you can tell whether the, the DNA is from a man or a woman. Hmm. The XX and the XY chromosomes are there. Right. Science is real. So, so Milwaukee is the second county here. Dane County has already done this, okay? Um, they did this earlier this year. Th this is crazy stuff. Um, I just got a notice from a person who was involved with the vote today saying that it did pass three to two mm. on the committee. So now it will go to the full Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors. And Jim, notice what they, they did. They came out and said to law enforcement, wink at this. Mm -hmm. just, just, just pretend like it's not there. Now, right now, let's clarify for everybody so they're not confused. We are not a state that has yet passed a law that prohibits medical personnel from, from doing these, uh, quote, therapies or surgeries, mm -hmm. okay? Because you're right, they're mutilations, they're, they're horrible. So, so right now that hasn't happened. But should it happen, that's what they're saying. Law enforcement, just act like you never saw it because this is wrong and, and, and this is gender affirming. They use words in this here. They talk about it being healthcare. This is not healthcare any more than abortion is healthcare. Right. Mutilating perfectly healthy body parts is not health care. Right. And gender affirming, that is a term that they are trying to say, okay, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to bring, and, and so actually I've heard another term, gender conforming. And these, th these are lies. Yeah. What they're doing is mutilating the, these, in the, these, these children and robbing them of a healthy future. So this, this is Milwaukee County gone off the rails. And Milwaukee County, since it's past committee, it will go on before the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors. And um, that agenda, no doubt, is one of their monthly meetings. And uh, friends, you can reach out. I don't have a graphic for this, but you can reach your County Board of Supervisor member at this number, 414-278-4222. That's 414-278-4222. Uh, and uh, so that matter does go to the full Common Council with the rec recommendation from this uh, Judiciary Committee. 
Uh, so since we're on the topic as well, uh, Julaine, uh, somebody, uh, one of our listeners uh, made us aware of this situation uh, here, and this is uh, taking place at Gateway Technical College. As uh, in October, they will be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, but also they're combining that with the twist in honor of LGBTQ plus History Month. And so they're going to be having a special drag queen event taking place at, uh, at uh, Gateway Technical College on October the 12th and promoting this. We can embrace and enjoy our Latinx and queer identities in one place. Well, here we are with another public educational institution and I don't know, we don't know, Jim, from what they're saying, well, how much public money is being used in this. But the, the bottom line is th th this kind of debauchery does not need to happen mm -hmm. within any kind of public context. I don't care whether it's a park or a farmer's market or a school or a tech college. It, it's, it's, not, it's not helpful. It's, in my opinion, it's not even entertainment. As a woman, I am incensed by it. That's not how I want to look, how I want to act. I don't know women who want to act like that, look like that behave like that, um, I, I, in addition to what this is doing to children. So yeah. shame on Gateway. Um, if I was a Hispanic, in, in the Hispanic community there, I might just be a little incensed that they're trying to link us together. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's taking place at Gateway, and uh, you can check the web for contacts if you want to speak out in, in pertaining to that. Jelaine Appling with us with the legislative update here tonight on TV 30's In Focus program. We've got more information. We've, we're catching up from a busy summer of lots of things going on. But one of the things that did happen this summer was the passage um, and signed into law by the City of Milwaukee and County Board, a raising of our sales tax here in the City of Milwaukee and also the county. And I'd like to show a couple of photos. Uh, first of all is the Milwaukee Mayor, Cavalier Johnson. And uh, here you're going to see his signing of the bill. And, and just, you know, it's baffling to me. Here we are raising everybody's tax by 2%. And look at the standing ovation uh, that is right behind him. And then also we saw the county board, uh, Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley, sign into law uh, this sales tax, four-tenth of a percent uh, uh, as well. And everybody's clapping and cheering like this is, you know, just a wonderful day here for the county. We're raising everybody's, and, and Julaine, those who are perhaps Central City are being hurt the, the worst by this. Those who, I know many who are just going to travel across the county line or city line to avoid uh, having to pay certain of these taxes. Some things you can avoid, you cannot avoid, such as buying a car in another municipality because it goes back to your place of residence. But, but for, you know, day in and day out events or uh, purchases, uh, but to see the celebration, to me, it's more a time of mourning that we've got to this point where we've got to raise everybody's taxes another 2.4%. Well, one thing I think the summer showed is the dire, dire straits of Milwaukee. Now, crime at this incredible, horrible levels. The two weekends or three weekends ago, 23 shootings. Yeah. Economic mismanagement of the highest order. So now they're trying to figure out how do we plug all these holes? You know, we... And, and, and I think they're desperate. But I agree with you, Jim. I think this could backfire on them. Because I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of people who live outside the city of Milwaukee who come into Milwaukee to buy anything. Now, I'm assuming this also applies though, to sports tickets. So if you wanted to watch the Bucks or something like that, um, the Brewers are outside of Milwaukee the, County, aren't they? No, are no, they, no. They're, they're in, in the Milwaukee county. county. But they, and, no, and the city. In the city, too? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if they were in or West, West Dallas Milwaukee. Or, yeah. Okay, but but I think it could backfire. But I think you're also right that the people that they need to be helping stand to be hurt the worst. And so you and I know this is not the end of this, because every time I ask the education people, how much will it take for you to be happy, and to quit asking, all I get is a four-letter word, more. And I think that's what you're going to see in Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, the, the state legislature in the budget that was signed while we were on an in-focus, you know, holiday here, um, that they tried to put some screws in to, to kind of force Milwaukee to mm -hmm. do some good things. And Milwaukee came back and argued and got some of these things mm -hmm. going. And um, I did some reading on this today, and I think if you take that county in, count, did the, one thing I'm curious about, when the county did their increase, which preceded what the city did, did the county know what the city was going to do? Yeah, I believe so, because the city went first. and um, With their proposal. With the proposal and passing, and the county followed suit. 
but uh, you know, I don't see anybody really working. How can we tighten this a little bit more? Are there things we're providing here? There are certain things we cannot, the, the, the services and so forth, and, and law enforcement is, is, a, is a big item here uh, in, in all of this, but what are those other areas that we should be looking at? And uh, uh, you know, are we giving money to Planned Parenthood, for instance, and, and other considerations as well? You've got to believe there's some fat in the budget somewhere. You've got to believe that there's areas where they could trim this. And I, and I do know, in, this, in your Milwaukee here, the pension deal is yep. still a big, big driver in this. Right. And uh, I think they're trying to find ways to plug the hole there. I'm just not sure that they're going to find the, that they're helping the people they intend to help. Uh, with with the kind of tax that they're putting on things. Some previous years of mismanagement. Seven point yeah. nine percent sales tax. I've never yeah. been so glad to not, given the sanctuary city thing or, or county, county thing and the income, their sales tax. I'm I'm really glad I live west of mm. Milwaukee. <laughs> Let's uh, hit a few other issues. Uh, we see that the GOP is trying to do a tax cut bill uh, for people here across the state of Wisconsin and. Uh, what, over $2 billion, $2.9 billion tax cut, and the uh, governor is poised to put his veto pen on that. Well, he's already vetoed, right? The budget had a good tax cut mm -hmm. for middle class. They were flattening the tax brackets. They were really working to make that a much better plan for all of us, regardless of the income level. Um, he took his very powerful veto pen and vetoed all of that. Let, let's be honest, this is coming out because of the surplus. <coughs> this is about the, the Republicans. Now, Interestingly, the Senate has been very, very quiet on this proposal that came out of the Assembly. The, the Senate was not involved with this, and I haven't heard a word from them yet. But this is about taking care responsibly of that surplus that's still out there, mm -hmm. and that was going to, to give a true middle, cl middle class tax cut and some re uh, benefits to retirees. And um, bravo to the Republicans. I think this is mostly a symbolic effort because... This is not a constitutional amendment. It's not bypassing the governor. The governor had historic number of vetoes. Last session was 127 or 128 vetoes. Um, I look for him to have a pretty strong, powerful, prolific mm -hmm. pen again. So, um, but, I, but I think at least it's worth talking about because the governor's, the governor's budget vetoes were significant on what he could have given middle class and didn't. Friends, Julian Appling with us here tonight. And uh, by the way, just going back to where could the city or county be cutting back? There's this thing called a trolley that oh, yeah. would expand here as well. <laughs> and uh, some things are just off the charts. Okay. Um, or off the trolley. Off, tracks, the, right? off, the, off the tracks. <laughs> yes, there we go. Um, we're going to be talking about some bills, but I want to also open the phone line since we have just a quarter hour left. And if you want to comment or maybe you've got a question on some of the things we've talked about, uh, you can go to your phone right now. Call 414-935-3030. 414-935-3030, toll free. You can reach us at 1-800-733-8830. Uh, your comments on any of these things we've talked about here tonight, we've had a lot on the table have more to come, uh, 800-733-8830. If you'd like to text your comment or, or a brief question, uh, put in your first name, the city that you're texting from, and then put your comment in. The text line uh, tonight, 414-439-3585. That's 414-439-3585. That's the text line here this evening. And if you have a, a comment that you wanted to share or ask a question, you can send it by way of text here tonight as well, and uh, we welcome those. While we're doing that, we're going to talk about some other bills that are going on. But, friends, if you want to, I know others sit back and they just said, we're gleaning all this information, writing it down. So that's okay, too. But if you would like to comment or ask a question about any of these things we've talked about here tonight, now is the time. 414-935-3030. Uh, you may also text 414-439-3585. Uh, Jolene, uh, we're going to look at a couple more bills here that have been introduced. One is Assembly Bill 377, and uh, also its companion is Senate Bill 378. And uh, this is dealing with uh, the whole matter of the uh, sports and, and so forth, uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, gender-related issues as it relates to sports programs. Well, a number of states have already done this, where they have come out and protected women's sports. 
by saying, no, if you're a biological male, you don't get to play on women's sports. Look at what's happened with Riley Gaines and others that, you know, uh, she's the kind of the, the main one right now. But this is about saying, look, we're going to have three options. You're going to have a boys team, a, a girls team, and a co-ed team. And the co-ed team is kind of up for grabs, but it's in, and they define sex in here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not terribly wild about the way sex is, de is defined in the bill. It's better than it, than it could be. But they say that sex is de it's um, sex determined at birth by a physician and reflected on the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. um, the physician doesn't determine sex. God right. determines sex. Right. The physician just records what is there. Yeah. It's, but this it, is better than it could have been. Conception. Yeah. At, at the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. it's, so, but the, but this is this is a, a, a protect women's sports bill for K twelve, and any also any of our private schools that are part of the parental choice programs. Yeah. So this was introduced a session ago and didn't make it through. So we'll see what will happen. The governor's already said he'll veto him. So, because he doesn't really, he says he cares about women, but mm -hmm. when we have the opportunity to protect women, we don't. That's Assembly Bill 377 and Senate Bill 378. And this would be uh, the public schools and private schools that are in the uh, parental choice program right. as well. We're going to talk about what's on the college level here as well. But, uh, Julian, here's a text. Somebody making their comment just indicating the sales tax increase is unbelievable. There's no justification for it since as prices go up, the amount of sales tax revenue automatically increases. We should be outraged, says the writer. We should be outraged. So we've seen the inflation taking place, and so now you're going to be paying that added tax on top of the inflation cost. Yeah, you're, you're, you're crushing your people. Mm -hmm. The people you're crushing are the people you're purporting to help because that's going to make it even harder for them to survive, let alone thrive. Let's uh, also pick up a call here tonight, 414-935-3030 is our number. You may text 414-439-3585. We've got Juanita calling from uh, Milwaukee. Hi, Juanita, you're on the air. Yes, I've called to get my supervisors, whatever her number or his number was. They did not call me back. Yeah. I'm retired. I'm a retired nurse from Milwaukee County, worked there 20, close to 20 years, and I retired due to, you know, my eye. Oh, hello? Yes, we're listening to you. Okay. So you retired. I didn't get a, I didn't get a call back, mm -hmm. but I know that they... Oh, I hear myself. Well, yeah, ma'am, you're because there's delay. So turn the volume off your TV set. Listen <laughs> on the phone. Uh, we are talking to you here. You're on the air. Okay. <clears throat> so me and, and I call my girlfriend because I don't know who to call, mm -hmm. and I know that they have killed at least two transgender men, and they're not going to stop. They're going to kill them, and they mutilated them. And they left them in the park. Hmm. I, I, I don't. So this transgender bill would make this sanctuary so that people can come and do bodily body mutilating surgery in Milwaukee. Is that something you're in favor of? No. Okay. So you would be in opposition to this this uh, recommendation here. And what you can do is is continue to reach out to your county supervisor. Now there is the the main number that I gave just a bit ago here. And we've had that on TV 30 running. But if you've called that and they're not calling you back, um, if you're able to go on the county's website, they also have some of the individual phone numbers directly to your supervisor as well. That may be helpful. I don't helpful. know what county I'm in. I, 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 what, what the supervisor doesn't change. <clears throat> sometimes, so I don't know which one I got. Well, I will you know, find out. I'm not that yeah. on the computer. Okay. We'll find out. Yeah, thank you. And and you could have a friend because the county, right on their website, you, who is my supervisor? And you put in your address and that information will come up with their phone number and an email address where you can connect with them as well. Sunday it didn't come up. Maybe it'll come up Monday. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for it's calling. horrible. It's not that I don't, I don't know what all that is, but mm -hmm. if you keep it to yourself, be safe like anyone else. Hmm. Thank you for It'll calling. Be okay, but you're going to flaunt this out in the streets, they're going to kill you. 
Well, Juanita, mm -hmm. thank you so much. But well, what's happening is that many are being driven into depression and suicide, even because of they they think this is the, they think Julaine that this is the pot of gold. You know, the, this is something that is utopia. If I can only change my up, outward appearance, everything is going to be better for me, and it actually turns worse. That's exactly right. Um, we have the studies now, or at least we're beginning to get more and more of them, and we're getting more and more people mm -hmm. who were, are called detransitioners who had these horrible surgeries or these therapies and the hormones and puberty blockers and all that when they were younger. And now, and, um, now, now they're, they're saying it was the worst decision I ever made. There's just, and, and young girls are coming out. And Chloe, um, forget her last name right now, but it's just, it's just, the stories are, are, are mounting, mm -hmm. and medical personnel are being put on notice. Sometimes these are um, young children, 10, 11, 12, 13, and, and they are told that this is what you need to do. If you've got doubts about your sexuality, then, then here, start taking these hormone pills or cross-sex hormone pills, and, and then we can do different surgeries on, on you. And and uh, kids are really getting messed up and sadly the statistics are going way up as well as the number of kids that are succumbing to this this uh, ideology that's being pushed on in the education system and through public broadcasting as well yeah it is and girls are an unusual target you know that's one of the exploding areas of all this is the young girls because they're so emotional yeah and and they they they're making rash decisions they're not equipped whether they're male or female, they're not equipped to make these decisions. Um, parents want what, to make their kids happy, and they're making rash decisions without knowing it. And I learned recently that a lot of these treatments are, are not, they're, they're um, prescription drugs that are off being used in an off-label way, you know, so that they were really designed for something different, and now they're using these for these, for the, presumably, you know, ostensibly for these um, Treatment. I don't want to use the word treatment. It's not mm -hmm. a treatment. No. It, it, it's a de destruction. It's a, it's a stopping of a natural a body, a physiological progression of puberty in most of these young people. And we know that they're going to cause not just short-term effects, but long-term effects. And so um, we're, once again, Jim, we're in this experimental age where, you know, well, we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but, well, if this will make you happy then, you know, you should try it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, UK, United Kingdom has a, kind of backtracked a little bit on Other this. Other countries are backtracking yes. as well. Mm -hmm. And instead, we're just, mm -hmm. we're just going full bore. So Our phone number, 414-935-3030. Let's go to Brad in West Dallas. Hi, Brad. Hey, Brother Jim. Two things. The one thing is um, about 9-11. Yeah. And then the 3,000 deaths that took place from that, just call it a contrived government incident. I don't believe like everybody else, like a lot of other people do. But um, just to, I'm not uh, playing it down though. That was a terrible thing that did happen. And I just wanted to add a little perspective. We've got 65 million deaths, I believe that's the number, maybe it's more, from abortion in this, in this uh, country since Roe v. Wade. And when you do the math on that, you'll find that it's over 3,500 deaths per day, every day, for the last 50 years. I just said that for perspective. Yeah. It's the other thing, oh, and by the way, um, we might be given over, so it may be a little late to ask for God's help mm. because of all those deaths, all that blood. Yeah. But the other thing is uh, what you were just talking about with these, uh, this Milwaukee County thing to give sexual perverts a sanctuary. As if they, the, the first thing I thought was, what, can't they move around freely? Don't we have gays in Milwaukee County already? And then found out what it really was with this uh, unnecessary surgery thing. Giving kids that, that kind of surgery, they're impressionable, they're pliable, they've been taught to believe in this stuff and think that they're, they're not a girl when they are and not a boy if they are, and then they give them unnecessary, unnecessary surgery and drugs. We're supposed to be protecting little kids, yeah. not cutting up their bodies and giving them these drugs. This is a terrible thing. Thank you, Brad. 
Appreciate your call here this evening. Uh, Julaine, uh, I think one of the things Brad was pointing out, as horrible as we saw these deaths on 9-11, every day has been a 9-11 to the unborn child. Absolutely. And the numbers on the number of children that have been killed since the Roe versus Wade in 1973 is, is beyond, actually beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. The difference in those two, though, I was thinking about as Brad was talking, is 911 was this concentrated, very visible, all of it happened on national television. We watched the planes come in, we watched the towers collapse, we saw what happened at the Pentagon, we saw what happened out there in, in, in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, abortion happens in the confines of a abortionist, um, I don't want to call it a clinic, but a facility. It, it isn't that public. And so these, these, are, these become nameless, faceless mm -hmm. babies. Yeah. Whereas we have lists of all the people that were killed in 911, and um, I totally agree with them. It, it's every day is a uh, this is genocide. It's nothing short of genocide, mm -hmm. and it's just that we don't see it in the same way as we see something like 911. Yeah, Julaine, uh, we talked about the bills being introduced on the uh, elementary, secondary schools, but also a couple of bills for. Uh, the university system as well to on the matter of transgender uh, teams. I mean, mm -hmm. participation based upon one's uh, gender and separation of biological sex. Yeah, pretty much it's a mirror image of the other bills that dealt with the K-12 schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but this deals with the UW system schools and any of our state uh, VOTEC schools, our technical colleges. Um, and, and, and basically says, look, you, you know, you don't, you don't let biological males play on the girls' team. You got a girls' team, a boys' team, and a co-ed team, and you play accordingly. And so um, there's some things in there about if they violate it that they don't, you know, um, to kind of put some teeth into it. But um, this is again an opportunity for people to weigh in with their legislators and let them know what they think about this bill. Is it a good idea to not let uh, boys play on girls' teams, or do we think that do we think that's just fine? Assembly Bill 378, Senate Bill 377. Let's go to Ted in Greenfield. Ted, you're on the air. Yes. Go ahead, Ted. Good, good evening. Uh, Ted, turn the volume out, down on your set, please. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm muted, yes. Great. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Jim. Hi. And uh, Andrew Lane. I have, I have a question as to why we couldn't introduce or ask someone to explore the possibility of uh, mental evaluation for anyone uh, who uh, entertains the idea of transitioning uh, regarding gender. Tell you what, I, uh, because we only have 45 seconds left in the program, quick response, Julie. Well, there, there's a possibility of having that, re but practically I don't see it happening mm -hmm. because they're going to think we're the ones that need the mental evaluation. But it's, um, it's certainly possible to talk about that. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, they've taken it off, though, the psychological. Yeah. Uh, the and and, and we know that there's so many of the psychologists that we have available mm -hmm. today are affirming this. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're part of the problem. And to talk somebody out of it uh, is many well, are then saying. Well, then we go into, you know, the um, conversion therapy right, issue, right? right? And Milwaukee County has already gone down there. Julaine, thanks for being back with us uh, here this week. And every month we're looking forward to a legislative update. Likewise. Friends, again, Wisconsin Family Council, wifamilycouncil.org. And uh, you can reach them at one 378 7395 Thanks for watching and focus. Good night.